everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Latest Thread. Today, we have a very special episode because we have some special quilting guests joining us today with their own quilts that we have selected to share our quilting ideas and suggestions for them to do their own quilting at home. So we're going to introduce you to them and we're going to hear a little bit about them and their quilts and you guys are going to get to hear all of our suggestions and input as how we would quilt each of them. So we're really excited to get started, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So why don't we go ahead and bring in our first guest. Give me a second. Okay. <laughs> Okay, are you ready, Jeannie? I am, I am, okay. <laughs> can't wait. Where, where are you from again, quick? Um, Toronto, Ontario. Oh, Toronto. Awesome, yeah. okay, great. Oh, it's chilly All right. here. <laughs> All right, we have Jeannie joining us all the way from Toronto, which is just on the Eastern side of where I'm from, uh, another Canadian. Welcome, Jeannie. Thank you, thank you. We're so happy that you were able to join us. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to what you have to to give me in the way of quilting for this quilt. I am stumped. Um, well, it's, it's beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Well, it's almost all Tula Pink fabrics. Uh, I really wanted to play with stripes. I guess the only fabric that isn't Tula Pink is the gray and white stripe. Um, but I just wanted to see what stripes would do um, when they were used with hexagons. And there we go. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I would share a picture of the quilt while you were talking about it. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. So I just started from the center and started working out. I drew up the hexagons, um, they're pieced. So some of them are full hexagons, some of them are pieced. And I just wanted to see where the design would go. Um, so it's a class that I teach locally, and I will be teaching it at Quilt Canada in 2022, if COVID allows. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. Um, I've been quilting for about 30 years, and um, long arming for maybe 10 but I've really only done pantographs. People, that's what they want. So I've been so busy doing those. I haven't done a lot of custom and I really want to on this quilt. So I'm looking right. for ideas. <laughs> so we'll, we'll take a look at a bit of a closer up view of the piecing. Because mm -hmm. that was a full picture of the quilt. Yeah. So people can see all the stripes in there. And a lot of fussy cutting that you did too. It's mostly fussy cutting. Even the stripes are um, just so that they all remain in the same place. I kind of wanted to play up the gray stripe that went around the hexagon, the center one. That was my first thought. Yeah, I like that part. <laughs> and I was also thinking of two layers of batting, which I've only done once to kind of make it pop. And well, are we ready to see our first one? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll make that bigger too. So, hi, Jeannie. I, hi. I love your quilt. It is utterly amazing. And Thank there you. is a lot of opportunities wanting to do it custom and um, I would imagine that something like that if you want to do it custom that you don't mind if it's more densely quilted. No I like I actually really like densely quilted quilts. Good <laughs> I do too. <laughs> so I, I thought you know because he said you want to see what happens with the gray around the hexagons mm -hmm. and so I thought you can just do a little you know um, scallop around mm -hmm. there 
you can also, and I didn't draw that, but I was not sure about the scale of that piece, but I thought if you quilt around in the ditch around the gray stripe and then put pebbles within the gray stripe to really accentuate that. Mm -hmm. But obviously that would be a lot more work, whereas the scallops is a little bit, you know, faster to execute. So, you know, it always depends on one's skill level and how much time they want to invest. You've invested a lot of time with the piecing, the fussy cutting. So mm -hmm. I think you want to invest the same amount of time I with do. the quilting. So I would probably do the pebbles in the gray and ditch around it. Now, I love how you fussy cut the fabric within the hexagons and I would definitely outline, you know, at least part of those flowers in order to make or whatever they are in order to make them pop and be more realistic. Again, okay. it takes a lot of time. But I think it's well worth the effort. I've done that on customer quilts. And then the stripe, super simple. I would just follow the fabric to guide me. So that's. Now, would you do color change in your thread throughout all of this? No. OK. <laughs> no, I probably wouldn't, because that's just adding to insanity. Yeah. But, <laughs> I think, you know, one of my go-to threads is a uh, gray thread and I would see which best blends and then choose a fine thread like a 60 weight and that way, you know, because those fabrics are so dominant, you know, so, um, okay, so be okay. I think it, the lighter gray thread will take on the color of the fabric, but that's just my opinion. I'm sure the others have, you know, Okay. Yeah. What do you think of a micro quilter? Because I, I never, I've got it. I've never used it. Would it be too fine? No, um, I probably would go with the 60, even though I do like the um, micro quilter. Now, my thoughts are, it depends. If you're backtracking a lot, then I like to use the micro quilter. And again, it takes on the, the, color of the fabric you know right yeah so I have to if, you, if you're using more if you're using two battings I think a little bit heavier thread will just give it yeah. more definition so okay. you know just my thoughts on that great thank you you're welcome okay you ready to move on to the next one yeah that one looked great <laughs> oh, this is me. Um, so my, I, the quilt is beautiful. Oh, thank you. Um, but <laughs> for me, when I look at this, to single, so it's, I would be confused. So I would be afraid that I was going to lose my way when, yeah. if I picked out a particular circle, <laughs> because if you do, you know, they kind of overlap. So mm -hmm. If you pick one full one and then move to another full one and another full one, you're going to be left with an oddball, one of those shapes somewhere. Yeah. Um, so my thought would be, I would probably, so if you see, I just started, I would probably pick a corner. It'd probably be the top corner only because that was where I would probably start quilting. Right. And I would just kind of try to make that giant circle hexagon kind of shape be the accentuated thing right just okay. because then the other ones can kind of go off of it like clamshells so they kind of would end up looking like overlapped mm -hmm. as it spread you could probably do the same thing it'd be confusing but you could probably start in the center if there was one full one in the center that's how i work the whole thing um, if you look just to, I don't know if it's your right or left, the center of the drawing that you did, mm -hmm. the only one that doesn't have a face on it is like that little flower. That's the center. Oh, the okay. So, I mean, you could do one full one in the center, center and then the the way out. because it would be like flower petals almost. Okay. And I feel like 
I I would put less quilting mm -hmm. to get the effect because the tighter you make it, the, you know, the, you're going to lose the definition almost, I guess. I don't know. Um, so how, how would be, I don't want to get confused. Right. <laughs> now, how far apart would you do those? Well, and that was the thing because I don't know, I don't know what the scale of it is. Um, I would probably put my first, I don't know how big those, how big are the right the stripe the gray the gray and white stripe is uh three-eighths of an inch yeah i would probably start with something easy to go in like i might start my first line um on that gray the, okay. the bottom of the gray from the outside of the circle mm -hmm. and then continue and you could even alternate it like you could put a couple of tight ones and then a wider one, a couple of tight ones, a wider one. So it would really add to the, you know, the texture of it. Okay. And you would do the gray thread as well, or? I would, and I would probably use a 60 weight as well okay. because for one thing with two battings, the backtracking really isn't going to be very obvious, even if you have to do it because, you know, it's it's going to sink so far down into that batting, I think, that you're fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. That sounds good, too. I'm going to have decisions to make. <laughs> <laughs> that one's me. So, yes, definitely double bet on this. Okay. Um, and I, I'm... These are going to be insane, tiny, detailed quilting on this, but that's okay. Because mm -hmm. yeah. if you don't want to quilt it, I'll quilt it for you. So <laughs> <laughs> I love this quilt. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but, thank um, you. Yeah. So I would ditch all around the, the, the whites and the grays. I'd pebble in all the grays, even in the, the corners of the, is that a corner of a hexi? Where you have that little accent gray around the hexi yeah it looks like um it. yes yeah in there yes. as well and then just you know ditch into the each design within the hexi so that okay. it really pops up with that double bat and then the like when i look at this the only cohesion on this quilt is that gray stripe yes and then all the stripes so yes. to make all those stars cohesive i would just put a, a, you know, an echo diamond in there and then fill that with pebbles to pull the pebbles into those as well. Okay. Yeah. Now, would you do gray thread as well? Most definitely. <laughs> okay. Now, yes. it looks like there's uh, stops and a lot of stops and starts. Yeah. I Usually by the middle of the second row, you'll know your path and you'll have it figured oh. out. Mm -hmm. Like okay. I would ditch, ditch everything and then you'll be like, oh, wait, I have to go back here. So by the second row, as you're ditching, you know where to stop and do your fill so that there's not as many starts and stops. Okay. You could maybe even on those shapes, like as you ditched around the center star, if you used one line that cut from the bottom of that gray stripe up to the center, to then that. you could travel and do the whole thing at once, come back out. Yeah, a little yeah. cut. Through. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. That's pretty too. I'm gonna have lots to dream about. <laughs> okay, Thank you that's very much. Mine. I um I just made the picture a little bit more pale in the background because when I was drawing on it, I couldn't even see my own lines. And like Jody said, I'd be worried when I was quilting this that I would be getting lost. Mm -hmm. So um I I I know that you had said you wanted to play up a little bit on the on the gray lines. Mm -hmm. So I kind of went in a direction similar to Jody with yeah. outlining a wheel, like a, a maybe a center circle mm -hmm. or the, you you did you did say that there is one that is a whole yeah. actual center in there. You could start at that one and then just keep and building, building out. And I really liked 
um, the, I, I like the idea for my own quilting to try and use whatever piecing is there as reference points that I can quilt to, mm -hmm. as well as thinking about your experience and wanting to do more custom quilting and just gaining confidence. And I think that rulers, um, simple ruler work is sometimes a really good way to get into that because you don't have to rely on um, being perfect with any of your or worry about being perfect with any of your free motion quilting at all. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can add more depth and density to that existing quilting. Once you've quilted a section, you can look back at it and say, okay, I want to add more here, or I'm going to put pebbles in the center, or I'm not, or I'm going to put an echo here. You know, you can kind of add to that depending on your own comfort level and what you, how you feel it's coming along. Um, and I kind of felt like a mandala, um, mandala, I don't know how you say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Karen inspires me with all her beautiful mandala drawings. So I was like, hey, we can make some pretty petals coming out of this, just playing off of the existing points. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons I chose this design instead of um, doing a ton of ditching, as you notice, there isn't a lot of ditching, is I wasn't sure if this was if this was this English paper piecing? Yes. Okay. So there so isn't really ditches. There's no ditch. Yeah. So that's one of the things that I think about when I've got open seams everywhere is because there no, there's no ditch, it's challenging to, dis, to keep your line of stitching just perfectly off to one side. Um, mm -hmm. And then if you do stitch right dead in the center, then you mm -hmm. often don't even see it. And I don't know, I sometimes I worry about cutting through some of the stitching that's yeah. already there. So um, being able to stabilize a quilt with custom quilting that has open seams for me, it, I feel like going across the seams is a, is a good way to deal with them. So it still stabilizes everything. So you can still use the quilt, but you don't have to worry about, oh, I'm not happy with my ditch because I don't have one. Right. right? Um, that makes a lot of sense too. And then the only other thing that I was thinking about was because um, a busy quilt um, sometimes I like to just put simple geometric on it. So straight lines and arcs, um, because it doesn't compete too much with your quilt and mm -hmm. you can still appreciate the pretty fabrics, um, and, and see everything in the quilting, uh, quilting as well, but neither of them are clashing with each other. Right. Right. So, but I did put, um, a ring around like Jody did like, so yeah. I've, I did ditch yeah. around the outside of the ring mm -hmm. and then I've, I'm thinking probably along the inside, like I, it connects right to the point of that outer ring hexagon, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, so that distance would be, I don't know, three, half an inch maybe, or a bit more Not from sure. there to the outer, <laughs> outer part of the ring, something like that. Yeah. Um, and it would just give each ring a nice bit of definition. Um, so yeah, and, and you and can click like on a whole center too. continuously. Sorry? I do like the curves too, with so much straight line. I didn't think of that. Yeah, yeah. And it's just a nice a bit of a balance. And you know, I was thinking as I was looking at all of these pictures, um, don't feel like you have to take any one of them and go, I'm gonna pick this or that. You could, we would be like so thrilled if you took some of the ideas and blended them together. Blended them. Yeah. And I like this idea from Karen and like this idea from Ava and so on. And, you know, we still want yeah. you to. Yeah. You do have to share have it with us when you're done. So we can I will. I did. will for sure. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what, too? It, looking at this, Sharon, mm -hmm. what could be really cool, too, would be to not do that on the entire quilt, like kind of do clusters of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then in between to fill in all the space, just do like half inch straight lines. That'd be cool too. Like it that. would, it would. Yeah. That actually might be pretty cool too, mm -hmm. because everything is so the same. So mm -hmm. if you right. changed up the quilting, you'd have different points of interest that your eye would be drawn to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you got the wheels turning now. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other questions for us, Jeannie? Um, no, I wrote them down and I think I've already asked them. <laughs> Red and the layers of batting. And no, this is wonderful. So these are going to stay up on 
Are they going to so, stand on the Gamel site? Or? I'm going to, yeah, you'll be able to watch the video, but I'm okay. going to send you, I'm going to email you when we're all done. We're going to email you all these pictures. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So you can have them and you can print them out and you could even doodle over top of what we've drawn just to kind of, do I want to add more? Do I want to have yeah. less? Oh, that's yeah. great. Thank you. We would definitely want to see what you come up with. So when you, uh, when you quilt it, we want to see you post pictures and tag us if you can. I will. I definitely will. And it's going to be on the cover of the pattern for, for the quilt. So I want to do a good job. So. Oh, wow. I'll yes. mention you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, good job on this quilt. We love it. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. And thank you so much for joining us today, Jeannie. Oh, you're welcome. Nice to meet all of you. You, you too. too. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. We have Lisa Gregg joining us. Uh, and Lisa, we would love to hear about you, where you're from, and your beautiful quilt. Hi, um, my name is Lisa Gregg, and I currently live in the western portion of the Upper Peninsula, Michigan, in a little town called Chassel. My husband and I retired here um, about four years ago, and um, we've pretty much settled in. Um, I'm originally from the Chicago area, Joliet, Illinois, which is where I was able to rent a long arm and fell in love with finishing quilts. The quilt on the wall or the quilt that you can see um, was a pizza box quilt. I'm in a quilt, uh, Quilters Guild. Um, so a pizza box quilt, you buy two yards of a focus fabric, two yards of a background fabric, some fat quarters, you stick it in a pizza box and it travels around your quilt guild. And it's most of the fabric is fabric from my stash. So the requirements for the pizza box quilt are that each square should be 12 and a half inches unfinished so that when you get it back, you can easily combine it with sashing because usually um, sashing seems to be the easiest because as you can see the blocks really wouldn't line up to just put into one quilt mm -hmm. so um, again they were supposed to be 12 and a half inches none of them were quite right so I decided to cut the um, the dress and plate was my anchor it was too big, so I had to leave that with that because I didn't want to lose the points. So it's a little over 12 and a half inches. And I cut the others down to 12, which made it a little harder to put the sashing on. Um, but it's a look that I really like. And um, it's going to be a donation quilt, was, is what I decided I would do if there's a local woman's shelter here. And I thought it would be good practice uh, for me as a quilter. I have quilted since 2014. I rented a machine, um, had very basic lessons. I learned to meander originally on my machine, my, my small sewing machine. And those um, muscle memory really carries over to driving it. So I've, my girlfriend said if I rent you can quilt my quilts. So I took one lesson and they threw quilts at me. And all I've ever done is a meander. And I found that as people have given me quilts, sashing really does stump me. I um, feel like I should do more when they're sashing. So I, why I submitted it, I'm asking for your help and ideas. Awesome. I have to apologize. My cat was... Um ambushing my camera and <laughs> I disappeared for a little bit. You know, she leaves me alone all the other days, but uh, when I'm filming, she likes to be a pest. <laughs> this is why we had that episode. So they could yeah. already meet your cat. <laughs> oh. She's just being a little demon today. All right. Well, here we go, Ava. You're drawing it first. Hi, Lisa. Hi, hi, Ava. So a sampler quilt, and I do quilt for other people, so I actually get a lot of sampler quilts. And I enjoy them because I like to do something block specific to each one of the blocks. Okay. 
Long arm quilters have different philosophies and some of the long arm quilters like to use a stencil design maybe and place it over top of all, you know, the blocks and quilt them all the same. But I just think that then it kind of, you kind of lose, you know, what the block intended to be, you know, and the piecing. So I approach it in a way that you see here, do something different. And that kind of, for me as a long arm quilter, makes it more fun because then it's not so repetitive. Mm -hmm. So I love the dressed in plate. And as you can see in the drawing, I actually just, you know, echoed on the inside, but didn't make it um, pointy. I rather addressed it as I was adding, you know, flower petals within the petals, use pebbles in the center. And then because it needed something on, uh, on the outside, you could either do, you know, a, a fill that's tight, but looking at the other blocks, you know, I just thought a curly cue in the corner would fill the space nicely. You were addressing the sashing and sashings, you know, they're, they can be a pain because, you know, especially if they are pieced in a way that you can't quilt them, con you know, consecutively. And so with a simple L design like that, um, you can travel quickly around the, the sashing. So that's one option. It all depends what your feel is of the quilt. You could have easily done curly cues or leaves, you know, depend because you have some floral fabrics in there. So leaves would have been appropriate also. So it all depends on your skill level, you know, and, and how you feel, you know, how you read the quilt, which direction to go in regards to your sashing. But that's why we, we say when you practice a new design, you should practice it um, going in all direction, especially, you know, with the sashings, you know, because you don't want to start and stop, you want to keep going. So being able to do it in all directions is helpful. So when you drew this would you you would go would you go straight across to stitch it or it looks like you've gone you but you were drawing so that's a different um view you went i would do right. the box separately and then go in after and do all the sashing okay that, that stabilizes the quilt so uh you know by me quilting the blocks first and okay. When I get to the sashing, I can, you know, keep rolling the quilt. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Looks good. Ready to move on? <clears throat> okay. Oh, this one's mine. <laughs> um, yeah, sashing is my absolute most dreaded item as well. <laughs> it's you know, there's a lot of designs you can put in sashing, but I, it might just be me. But when I, you know, you have the sashing, it's between two. And a lot of times you think, well, I'll just do it around each block. But if it's directional, that for me is like, I can't do it because wait, these ones are going to be going this way. And these ones are, and I just can't do it. So my default is generally something that's non-directional. Okay. The other thing I hate about sashing is that it's an after, you know, it's after the fact. So I like to try to do it. Something that can go out and then you can retrace it back. So I can do it while I'm doing the border. So all, so I did the leaves because, and I love doing the leaves because you can use the seam as the spine, do them. And then when I came up and came to the sashing, I just did the little curls and leaves in as far as I, yeah, I could have went the whole way across actually, but then I'll do the other side when I get with the border to that side. 
So it's like a tendril with a leaf and it goes all the way back out and I continue on with the border. And the same across the top, I can just drop down in and come back out. Um, and like Ava mentioned, generally, yeah, I, I like to do something different in every block, but usually for me, the dis I'm also a huge fan of putting the same design in every block if the fabrics are busy. Because a lot of times you don't wanna do all this fancy stuff when you're not really gonna see it anyway. So I usually pick something simple, in this case, like a little wreath leaf thing. Okay. Because it's gonna fill the whole block up. It's open and it really just becomes kind of a mask and you can kind of still see the, the, the piecing beyond it. Um, yeah, and then those little pink bars, those are, I would just keep those super simple. Because okay. in my mind, that's kind of the background of the whole, all those blocks. Yeah, it was filler to just yeah. be symmetrical and yeah, fill it up, to fill in space. Was, yeah, was, and then they would be cohesive through the whole thing. Okay, all right. I, I like the, I like the fact that you've joined the border and the sashing because sometimes when you, again, it's individual taste and style. Sure. It, when you do them separately, they bubble. They, they, and when you wash it, uh, some of that goes away, but I like how they're joined. It's, it is time saver, but I, I like the fact that it, it really kind of blends sort of in to one and the fabric will make each one individual, the, yeah. the fabric color. So, and I, I will say too, my other biggest thing, I'll never forget when we first started our business, we did a sampler quilt. And, you know, we pulled out every item we had, every stencil, every template, and every block we did totally different. When you looked at it at the end, it was like, oh, man, there is a lot going on here. So I, I learned pretty quickly, like you need to pick a theme, even if you do something different in every block. Like mm -hmm. if I pick feathers, every block I can do whatever I want, as long as there's a feather element somewhere in every one, it kind of will make your whole quilt cohesive. Okay. That's good to know. Okay. I do have a question in general, just about quilting. When, when it comes to like, do you, uh, how much do you outline before you do it? Do you, I mean, if the idea is to catch as many of the seams as possible, so you don't have stress on individual seams when the person is using the quilt. Um, when does it warrant like not a stitch in the ditch, but next to it? Or how do you, how do you decide on something like that? Well, can I and that's kind of off target. So if you don't want to. No, it's not. A, well, it depends if it's your quilt, you can spend as much time on it as you want. But if it's a customer quilt that has a lower budget, there may not be any ditching in that quilt just because they have a very small budget. And the quilting is what holds everything together. You know, even if you're quilting over the seams. Right. Do you recommend the, the, the ditching? I mean, how that's a personal preference. Yeah. If you have all the time in the world, it's personal preference. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, and a lot of times too, if you think ahead and you don't want to ditch or you're doing it for someone else and they don't want to pay for ditching, you can always do things that kind of go almost to it to kind of get the same effect without actually doing it. Okay. I mean, bow oh, ditching with your background fills. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, me personally, I'm a big ditcher. If it's a custom quilt, I ditch everything because mm -hmm. I think it, it, you know, but it all depends on the style of quilts. I'm here in Ohio and I get a lot of, a lot of traditional quilts such as yours. Okay. And I just feel that, um, you know, it defines the block. I, I personally dislike it if, you know, you do all this quilting, but the block itself, you know, the, let's say your, your star is not defined as a star. You know, no matter what I put on the inside, I want that to look like a star when it's finished. But, you know, like uh, Karen said, it's a 
or Jody, it's a personal preference often. And I quote Father saying it does have to do with the budget as well. But that's usually where I probably still would ditch because it just needs it. So I know that's not. Well, it depends how much ditching there is. We could have a whole episode on ditching, but. (laughs) Because my next question is, do you run it down the seam or do you run it next to it? Is it when you ditch um, or a wavy line across? No, it's a true ditch. Well, it depends. I'm a seams open presser. Okay. My seams open. So I like to stay right on the edge of the ditch that's okay. on my own stuff, you know, but, and it depends if there is actually a ditch on customer stuff. Cause sometimes it's on one side and then it flips over to the other. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes like everybody has already said, it comes down to just aesthetics. And um, I, I have had clients with maybe a, a tighter budget and they're not sure if they want to go the extra mile and do the ditching. And so you can do this little exercise for them and for yourself on your own quilts to decide if you want to go the extra mile and do the ditching is quilt a section and don't ditch anything and then stand back and take a look at it and see if you like how it looks. Um, Most of the time, the ditching is going to totally clean up and tidy up the whole appearance of that block instead of, because if you have different stitching elements in different places, um, you're going to have different areas that are a little bit poofier and some that are laying more flat. And I really do like to see um, and a more even amount of dimension throughout. So um, it, it just tidies up the whole appearance. And then you look at it afterwards and go, look at the difference the ditching makes. And you can even send your customer uh, a picture of it and saying before and after. And it's usually always worth it to, to do the extra work on it. So, And the ditching would be done first. I would try to do the ditching as I go. If you okay. All right. so Whenever you can, possibly can, it just makes your job easier. To keep a continual thread. Okay. Okay. If Thank you, you. Thank you. Okay. So next we have Karen. Oh, I'm like, I was like, I forgot it was my turn. Ta-da. Pretty. Yeah. So, um, I have an issue with sashings. I've always hated sashings, but I'm starting to like them more, a lot more. <laughs> but this is my go-to for a sashing, which is just a continuous scroll. And I, I very much do similar to Jody. I'll go up one side. When I get to that little one coming down, I'll quilt it down and then just echo right back up it and continue over. And um, in the border, all I did was follow kind of your sashing lines. And I bumped from the one sashing up to the point in the corner. And then the only place it got weird is where that the little pink corners are, your fillers. Yeah, yeah. So I just went to the bottom of the sashing there. So actually the, the top border and the top and bottom are the same. And then the sides will be a little bit different just where it lands. Okay. And then in all the blocks, I just did um, continuous curve point to point, but I made sure to add kind of a little curly here and there to keep that cohesion. <laughs> through the quilt. Okay. Great. I like the curly, I like the, the curly cue. I've done the L's and E's before and that's fairly easy. This mm-hmm. is a nice idea also. Um, I like the curls as well. And that should be relatively easy to do. Yeah. Cause it's still, I, I'm still practicing. <laughs> We're all still practicing. <laughs> <It's> forever. <laughs> Just when you think you've seen it all. Cool. Thank you. There, it's, I really, really appreciate the input. Last one. Oh, so wow. I got a little carried away. So you little <laughs> overachiever. Draw on the- I'm sorry. I couldn't stop drawing once I started. <laughs> I do like barring. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a, it's fun. Like sampler quilts are just the, all these different areas that you can fill things up with. And, um, your, your biggest concern when you sent the picture in was this sashing. And, and when I looked at this pretty Dresden right in the middle, that's the first thing I thought was, this isn't sashing. This is a frame around your centerpiece. This is a yes. frame around your pretty Dresden in the center. So I just wanted to draw a little bit more attention to that and break up the sashing look by 
quilting um, a frame around it and very similar. I mean, Ava talked about leaves. Jody talked about leaves. Um, Karen did the curly cue and there's a curly cue with the leaf. So it seems like we're kind of all pointing in the same direction on the, on the curly cues and leaves idea. Um, but I broke it up so that there would be that curly cue and leaf in here. And Jody said too, like these vertical and horizontal sashings, like what do you do in those spaces that looks nice throughout? So um, I just did some double space lines. So we did a close line and then a little bit of space and then a tighter line and some space um, and then repeated that on the outside border. So the inner block frame for the dress is repeated on the first border and then the, the double key, piano cue, if you want to call it that, is repeated on the final outer border. Um, and I think Jody had said too, it's a good idea with a sampler quilts to do some of the things that are consistent throughout. So whether or not it's the same block design or it's the same element that you repeat in different places, I picked a few different elements and just repeated them in different spots. So the continuous curves, uh, the angles, um, and these little loopy lines, uh -huh. just kind of like a simple, in some of the white negative space areas. Okay. And you did say that you were a rock star at meandering. I, <laughs> <laughs> not, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but you said that meandering was kind of like a go-to and you felt comfortable there. So I thought that might be a kind of nice way to put a, something a little bit more dense behind the Dresden to give, bring some more attention to the center of the, okay. the block. Um, and I wasn't also sure which way the seams were pressed inside the Dresden. So I went um, arc up to the, the V. Okay on either side of the ditch just to help secure it without having to stitch in a ditch if there maybe wasn't a ditch there. So, okay. All right. Yeah. Very, very pretty. Yes. I'm very comfortable with my meandering. I think, um, I, I would say I excel. <laughs> 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 well it's always good to do something that you're really really good at in each quilt because then it makes you feel a little bit you know it's like when you're teaching your dog a new trick you always end off with something that they already know how to do <laughs> and I'm not making an uh, inappropriate reference to anybody about a dog at all just saying <laughs> that's not what I'm trying to say <laughs> Very pretty. And, and yes, the Dresden plate is the star of the quilt. I mean, everything just adds to it. It's, it's very pretty. So thank you. Wow. Do you have any other questions for us? Um, I don't think so. Um, no, I really appreciate all your help. Awesome. Thank you. Well, go ahead. <laughs> will you be sending me Will I see photos of what you did? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. After after we're done recording today, I'm going to email you the pictures of what you've seen, okay. and you can um, you can combine and that that that's what we said to to Jeannie. You could take some of the ideas and say I liked this one from this and that one from that, and combine different ideas to come up with something that's still you okay. um, that you're comfortable with. I really like the ideas and I do like barring. When I took lessons, the Gail showed me how to bar the quilts. So that would be with the the vertical and horizontal lines. Mm -hmm. Easy enough to do. Um, yeah. yeah, and I had thought about doing it through the, some of the sashing and that wouldn't make sense because then again, that's really not, the sashing is more quilt, the border is 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 more the, the, the border, so. Yeah, I really appreciate everything. Um, again, with the stitching in the ditch, I see what people do on the website, you know, the, the Facebook site. And, and I'm just curious how and why and benefits or not benefits. And, you know, again, knowing a little bit more, I can explain it to clients uh, easier, you know, and sell them what I think they need or, or don't mm -hmm. need or, you know, what yeah. they need. Even if you just, you don't even have to stitch in the ditch on their quilt to take that photo comparison. I was talking about that before and after. You just do it on one of your quilts right. while you're doing something and you can have an example to show them, um, you know, or stitch inside a big part of an applique and show it not ditched and then show them a picture of it ditched and as well as piecing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to definitely do that on this one because it's mine and it's a donation quilt. Um, it's, it's a perfect opportunity to um, explore and use mm -hmm. 
some more stitches. Yeah. Because, you know, the feather looks funny up close, but when you put a feather on the, you lay it away from you, your quilting looks much better than what you see up close. Yeah. <laughs> when we're quilting it, we're like this close, but in real life, we're never that close to the quilt ever again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's much prettier than you might think. So, and just practicing. Thank you so yeah. much for all the options. We appreciate you submitting your quilt and uh, for coming on the show with us. It was been, it's been nice to have you. All right. Thank you guys. Ah, Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Have a great Take day. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Welcome back everyone. We have our third guest with us, Pauline, and we would love to hear all about you and your quilt, Pauline. Hi. So yes, I, uh, this is a quilt that I did as part of um, one of those online mystery quilts uh, that was hosted by Craftsy. Um, it was uh, uh, designed by Amy Smart, who has a blog called Diary of a Quilter. And uh, she calls the, this quilt pattern hopscotch. And um, so I made it online. Uh, following that online program, it was probably one of my first quilts uh, that I did that was made with all solid fabrics. And I can't remember which company they're from, um, but uh, I thought it was fun. And we there were different layouts in terms of how you could arrange the colors, but uh, I managed to finish the quilt top and then life took over and I never got around to doing long arm on it. I uh, just to, I do all kinds of long arm quilting. I, I do freehand ruler work. I do computerized quilting uh, on the gamel machines. And so I've been sitting on this one for a while trying to come up with something interesting to do on it. And I can't wait to see what you guys have come up with. <laughs> Well, we do have some awesome things to share with you. Oh, Pauline, where are you from? I am originally from New Brunswick uh, in Eastern Canada, um, French background. So you may detect an accent that I've never been successful in overcoming. <laughs> I can um, hear it. <laughs> and I've lived in Alberta now oh, since 1998. So uh, yeah, I've, I've had the opportunity to live across both the uh, ends of Canada, if you want to call it that. <laughs> awesome. Okay. All righty. Okay. Um, hi, Pauline. I love huh? your quilt. I'm glad you decided to experiment with solids because they're a lot of fun. But they also can be detrimental in regards to quilting because you have to just really give it a lot of thought, more thought, I think, because everything's right there. Yeah. So you said you, you do all kinds of quilting. So I chose for the most part to do ruler work. Obviously I just drew this on the screen, so it's not quite straight, but in real life, if I was quilting that, I would use a ruler to do so. And I was trying to look at it because you want to um, emphasize, you know, the piecing, but I also like how you're able to create secondary designs, you know, mm -hmm. as you're as you're looking to make things happen. So I chose to do a chevron quilting um, in the white area behind your colored crosses to kind of make that go in the background and then did tighter quilting in the gray areas. And, and I thought it would look really cool because then the chevron quilting, it looks like it's peeking out from behind the gray area by using, you know, the different angles. And then just a very simple swirl design and you can still um, quilt this pretty consecutively. In regards to thread color, I probably would choose a lighter gray thread, 60 weight or silver. You know, I would lay it across there, but I would not want to um, 
change colors in order to do this. So mm -hmm. that's what I was thinking. Oh, that's neat. It's nice to see it on screen because all of a sudden the juices are going. <laughs> <laughs> and Pauline, feel free to ask questions as we go too for each of the designs. You're welcome to do that. Uh, well, this one, the one question I have is, would you do anything inside the the crosses themselves? Well, the problem was I didn't know what scale that was and how wide they are. So how how wide are the bars? They're probably about an inch and a half to two inches. Well, then definitely, yes. Yeah. So that changes things, but you know, when, when we saw the picture, as I said, didn't know, you know, how wide it was. Yeah, yeah. So, well, that's good. That's really good. I'm uh, really nice. Thank you for that idea. I really appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. <clears throat> Next up, see if I can move this one up into the middle more. That's me. That. <laughs> um, yeah, so kind of, it's really a lot of straight stuff. Mm -hmm. Everything is straight. So I would probably pick a circle, like a half inch circle ring and just lay it, you know, on those over top of the gray ones. Yeah. Or it's the white ones. I'm sorry. Over top of the white and then mark it. And then as I, you could do this really continuously because you have, you know, you're going to go in there. You would stitch the circle up back down and then you can do your fill to travel up. Because then in the gray, I just did the same thing. I just echoed it a few times to give it layers. And then those circles are going to pop out and it's going to look like a whole circle grid back behind there, like the background. And then the um, plus signs or whatever they are, I would yeah. keep that super simple. And I would say I'd echo in probably because I would stitch in the ditch the, you know, the other parts of it. Yes. Um, so they would already be ditched. So I would probably just come in either a quarter of an inch or a half inch, just depending on the spacing and run those lines, both sides of them. And then the other direction as well, because then it's going to give you kind of like those little nine patches at the intersections. Yes. So that'd be kind of cool. That's neat because that was one of the uh, close to one of the things I had thought about about a potential circle in in one of those. Except I kind of got caught. I, I was struggling between choosing: do I do that in both the gray and the white, or or focus oh, on could. one of the two? Right. You could do that, but then you probably need to do a fill behind kind of all of it. You know what I mean? To make yeah. that circle ring pop out, you're going to need to, or you could do in the gray, you could do a square. Yeah. Yeah. On point, like instead of the circle or yeah. in alternating ones. Mm -hmm. Really neat. Well, I'm, I'm liking this. <laughs> since you did it in solids, then it's awesome because it's all going to show. Yes. Yeah, Not like trying to make it show on a print is really hard. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. All right. Now I know it's my turn. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> the last one, I know it's my turn. <laughs> so um, I, I, I did wider lines in the white and more dense lines in the gray because I want that gray to sink back behind all, you know, I just want, I like the textural dimension of it. And then all I, when I get to the, the little squares, the little cornerstones, cornerstones. <laughs> cornerstones. Posts. <laughs> I, I, it's the same density as the white, but I do it both directions, which mm -hmm. kind of pulls it together. And then now I know that they're an inch and a half to two inches. I, I would just kind of echo into the, the cross sections. I mean, it would, be, it would be ditched, but I just want a little echo. So maybe a uh, you know, yeah. quarter inch, three eighths of an inch in on each side. 
Yeah. So. Really nice. Yeah. This is like having my own consulting group. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank that you so much. That, that I like all of them. It's going to be hard to choose. Use a little bit yeah. of everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have one more. And, and for this one, I oh, actually please. played in Creative Studio because I know you have a Statler. Yeah. Or you are able to work on a Statler. And, um, and for, the, for those out there who have an Elevate, this is something that they could do as well. Um, and I just thought, wouldn't it be kind of fun to just overlay the whole thing? It's still custom. It's not edge to edge. But um, I really like how the overlapping circles made these kind of curved crosshatch leaves from Ooh, section yeah. to section. And not knowing, again, uh, how big your piecing is, this circle may be just way too big. Um, but if that's the case, you have the ability in Creative Studio to divide patterns and, and you could cut off a few of the outer rings and then make that larger so that you could adjust the density. Yeah. Um, so I put the name of the pattern here, but if you take a look at the pattern itself, it's this particular one would be a ton of stops and starts because yeah. they're all individual circles. Mm -hmm. So um, there's an option here to cut through one of them to, you know, have them join if you wanted to fiddle with that. Or if you were wanting to just do a little bit more shopping, I found that in the, um, the pattern store in Creative Studio and just oh. pulled it out just to get a visual. And um, but there are ones that come out like a spiral and then yes. stop at a perfect circle on the outside edge instead of just kind of stopping in the middle of nowhere. Um, so with a little bit of searching, you could find the right um, circle pattern. And I think it's so cool how it makes like a bullseye kind of in the yeah. center yeah. of the different sections. So really neat. It, it almost feels like the quilt's done. <laughs> <laughs> You're partly there. <laughs> well, it's but, yeah. the one that I think part of the reason it's been, you know, I haven't been able to get back to it is because I knew that with the solid fabrics, the quilting will really show. And mm -hmm. uh, I just kind of wanted to really play and do something special to it for that purpose. Because, you know, a lot of times we quilt, like I do, I work at the quilt shop in St. Albert uh, with their gamel machines. And often people will want um, you know, custom or semi-custom quilting, but then the fabrics are so busy that, you know, it becomes more about the texture rather than seeing the quilting design. And mm -hmm. um, it, it can be challenging. Sometimes my heart breaks because they choose these beautiful elaborate designs, but you can't see them because the fabrics are so busy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, yeah. my, <laughs> that was my puppy. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Usually it's usually it's minor care. Well, we all have dogs that make their little yep. debuts from time to time. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. That's awesome. Thank and you the, for joining us. Well, I wanted to, I'm going to take a second to pitch for, uh, because I, I can't tell you guys how grateful I am for the programming that the educators at Gamel provide. Uh, the latest thread, the Quilting with Confidence tour, um, the online classes that have been done through that, uh, that amazing quilt show that started, you know, because of COVID. Um, it's been invaluable to people like us who you, you can only go as far as your imagination takes you. And sometimes that's limiting when you're not exposed to people who do something different. And so a great big thank you. I've been following this uh, latest thread for ever since it started and I'm really, really enjoying it. So I, I'm sure there are others out there who feel like I do. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could just shoot a bunch of love rings across the screen right now. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. please, please don't stop because it, it's, it's what makes us, it's more enjoyable and makes us make better use of the gamble machines that we have. So um, we really, really appreciate it. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that's awesome feedback. Thanks so much, Pauline. We're, you know, without people like you guys who are interested in watching, I mean, what would we be doing with our time? <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed uh, coming on our show and um, take some of the ideas and you can even yeah. kind of blend them together and come up with something all your own. We still want well, uh, I'm hoping, quilt. Yeah, I'm hoping to find time and, and get it quilted and maybe I'll send you all a picture. <laughs> oh, yes, we, we would definitely want you to post a picture when it's done and and uh, and tag us if you can. That would be great. Thank yeah. you. Thanks again for joining us Thank today. You. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> well, that was so much fun. Um, I love seeing everybody's ideas and hearing the questions from everyone. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing all of the quilting that they end up doing. So hopefully they share pictures of it on the pages. So we are going to be doing this regularly, but we are going to pick one special quilt with one special quilter for each episode to add um, this part or this kind of element into the episodes. And so we will be doing another call out uh, for more quilts soon. So make sure you stay tuned and watch for that. And that's it for today. So thanks for so much for joining us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the latest thread. Bye. Bye.